welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, then my name is Katie, I'm a full-time artist, and if you're not new here, then welcome back. Today I'm showing a process video for this autumnal house piece. It's kind of spooky and very seasonal, and I was really pleased with the textures. If you've seen a lot of my recent videos, you'll know that I'm sort of developing my style at the moment and playing with a lot of new things, including texture, so that's what this piece is all about. You'll see here I'm using my paper palette, so that gouache on there is old, and I only squeezed out one new fresh colour, and that's one of the reasons why I love using gouache, because it can be re-wet, and I don't waste any paint that way, because a lot of the colours I use, especially for my landscapes, are often the same. I have a favourite green and yellow that I like to mix up, and so it works really nicely on the paper palette. And I'm also working in my 12 by 12 centimeter Royal Talon sketchbook. It's quite a small sketchbook, but it feels really manageable. I started working in this during the daily art challenge, and I just found it really helpful for days where like a bigger spread or a bigger sketchbook was a little bit daunting, and this was just perfect to fill for quicker artwork. So I'm using the gouache quite watered down, a lot of the times with gouache you often see it being used really opaquely, but I like to use a lot of water in mine and it works nicely with the older gouache because I can use a lot of water and this sketchbook isn't really for mixed media, but I did find it held up pretty well with this amount of water on top of it. I'm keeping my brush marks really loose and mixing in a lot of colours on the page rather than on the palette. So you'll notice where I've got like some orange on my brush and some green or when I've got the yellow and the green together. I haven't spent a lot of time to mix the colour first. I'm mostly just allowing them to blend together on the page. I'm using a darker blue for the sky. I want this to be really atmospheric and moody so I changed the reference which is from Google Maps and I will link that down below. And that was like quite an overcast sky but I wanted to make it more moody so it's more stormy and kind of at night. And you can see here where I haven't really mixed the colours. So you can see a bit of red in the top because I wanted it to be a bit more purpley than it was. So I'm just going over that lighter blue just to add in a bit more of the moody tones. And adding in some black as well. So again I'm keeping my movements really soft. There's a lot of looser brush strokes, and because of the amount of water that I'm using, it does help to blend the colours. It does warp the paper a little bit because, it, like I said, it's not for mixed media, and a lot of the times if I'm doing a watery technique like this, I'd prefer to use a thicker paper. I really recommend the Etcher sketchbook for that, but that one is cold pressed so it's got more texture, whereas I also wanted to play with the smooth texture in this Royal Talons piece. So I'm just putting in the house now. Like I said, this is a house on Google Maps and I really like the colour of it. it. Took me a few goes to get the right colour with my paint, but I really like how it turned out because I feel like it works with the colours of the landscape and the sky. And I feel like it really comes together when I add in the details later on. So this experiment was mostly for the texture. I really wanted to use the soft textures which you'll have seen a little bit in my October vlog when I created that really textured piece and I feel like this is kind of a development from that with my current art style so it kind of merges those texture experiments with the ink with now gouache and my usual method of layering up with other mediums. So I'm just using the one brush for this, which is quite a large round-headed brush. And then something that I've been using more and more lately are these Derwent Inktense pencils. So for a really long time I only used Prismacolors or Luminance, and I really shied away from water-soluble pencils. But for this one I wanted to experiment some more, and later on you'll see where they come out really wet, because I've literally just dipped the pencil into the water and then put it on the page. But one of the things I really like about these pencils is how soft they are and how much pigment you can get from them. I grew up thinking that watercolour pencils weren't very good. I personally never liked to put them on the page and then add the water. It never felt right for me, so I always gravitated towards paint. 
but now I'm kind of rediscovering them and adapting them into my art style in a new way and I really love these Derwin Inktense pencils for that. So I'm adding on the tweeds here. I do feel like I need to practice tweeds a bit more. I'm not loving this branch effect. I feel like it doesn't look very realistic, but it doesn't it does look quite unnatural, which isn't really what I'm going for. But it definitely made sense in this like creepy scene to have tweeds like this, and I think it does work in this piece. So in November I am planning on joining in with Folktale Week and this was kind of like a precursor to that. I want to create some more work that is a little bit more moody and experimental with textures so this kind of was the start of that experiment. I think my Folktale Week pieces are definitely going to focus on texture but probably not landscapes. I think I want to do it more based in the forest and I'm really excited to work on the story for that. I haven't decided what it is yet and I haven't written it, but the prompts for Folktale Week have been announced, so I'll be using those and working my story around them. And I will pop a link to the prompts down below in the description as well. So this is where I'm adding on some more texture with the coloured pencils. I added on this car as well, which I really liked. And that is in the reference, though I didn't quite get the like location right of it so it kind of looks a bit odd right next to that tree but um I don't think it matters and I do enjoy adding cars because I think it adds a lot of narrative to the piece as if somebody is actually living there in this little creepy house so this is where I've put some of the wet pencil into the sky you can see where it's slightly shiny and that just softens the nib a lot and means I can get a lot more pigment down onto the page but I've also used the technique where I'm just adding on some really soft texture. And again, this is different to my usual method when I'm usually quite harsh with my lines, especially when I use near colours. So I'm just trying to build up that texture in the background really slowly. I wanted it to be a lot darker back there. So I'm just using this softer shade and then I do come in with a paintbrush as well to soften it again. And that's the beauty with these pencils, is you can just use them as they are, but you can also soften it with the water. So one of the things I'm trying to add into my pieces is a lot more depth, and the softer textures, which I think definitely helps with that. I'm also trying to be a bit more tactile with my pieces, so you can see I'm just using my finger, which I've dipped into the water and I'm adding that straight onto the page. I've also been using soft pastels recently, which I haven't used on this spread, but they've been really interesting, again, for the texture, and I'm usually quite a neat artist and I don't like to get too messy, so it's been really interesting using my fingers a little bit more to smudge the pastels, and it's definitely influenced me here as well, where I'm using my finger sometimes to soften out these marks. And again, I think it's a really fun way to work, trying new techniques and seeing what I enjoy and what I don't enjoy, coming to new art materials or old art materials and seeing them in a different way, which I think is really exciting. So I'm adding on some of the details here, which is obviously, as I've talked about many times, my favourite part in the process. And I don't love the way the windows turned out, so I do go over those a little bit later. But I feel like these little tiny details really finish the picture off nicely. So I'm just coming in with some more pencils here and just adding more and more texture. You can see where the orange pencil hit a bit of water there and it really amped up the orange tones back there. And coming in with some near colour, again really softly, so I'm not doing my usual methods. So coming in with the ochre pastel here and I do also use the raw umber and I think the dark and light olive. Those are my go-tos but I am trying to use them in a softer way than usual and something that I don't often do with them is wetting them again because they are water soluble just to increase the texture here at the front and I'm also laying it over the water as well and then going back in so the paper didn't really like that so I didn't do that much but I think that's a really good technique to try on some thicker papers and there's just so many combinations you can do and like I said it really is exciting to use the materials in a different way so this is how the final spread turned out and some close-ups. 
I really hope you enjoyed watching and I will see you next week with a new video. See you later! Used to get my head done, used to have my nails long, used to wearing makeup every day, used to rush to work and